Today I'm going to talk about a lesser known type of ham radio, the front facing speaker ham radio uh, based off of land mobile radios that have a front facing speaker. So why would we want to have one? One, because the speaker faces out the front and not off the top or the bottom of the unit, it makes installation a little bit easier in a lot of areas in a car. The second reason is if you don't have any 440 activity in your area, then do you need a dual band radio? Also, uh, the two meter only radios tend to have higher power outputs. Another advantage is if you want to run a two meter ham radio and a GMRS UHF radio off the same antenna, you can do that. And this is how you'll see in the diagram I have two radios, one antenna, and the triangle item is a duplexer. And uh, you can get a Comet CF 461A to do this for you, and it splits the UHF and the VHF signal uh, to and from the antenna. So you have to be a little cautious on the antenna that you pick. Because these radios transmit at higher than 50 watts, you have to make sure your antenna is rated for that. If you are going to do a dual band, uh, UHF, VHF, I suggest the Comet CA-2X4SR. Uh, SR means search and rescue. This is a wide band rate antenna that covers land mobile and ham radio frequencies. It's 40 inches long, uh, has a fold-over feature, and can take 150 watts. If you're only doing 2 meter or 2 meter and UHF in the ham frequencies and you want a shorter antenna, you can get a Diamond NR72B NMO. It's 13.8 inches long and takes 100 watts. They also have a SG 7000A, which is a uh, UHF connection. It's also also a fold over and it's 18.5 inches and takes 100 watts. Now what radios are on the market for 2 meter front facing speakers? Yezu has two. Uh, the 2 meter only is the model number FTM dash 3100R uh, that transmits at the highest power of 65 watts. You can also set it for 30 watts and 5 watts. And it costs about $150. Azu also makes a dual band front facing speaker radio that also uses their digital mode. That model number is FTM 7250DR and since it's a dual band it transmits at 50 watts high has a 25 watt and a 5 watt setting. So the next radio on the list is a Kenwood TM-281A. It transmits at a high of 25 watts and a low of 25 watts. You'll notice it doesn't have a 5 watt setting. Uh, this may have the most intuitive menu system and control panel for most people. It is the highest cost one at $210. The next radio is an Alinko DR-B185HT. Now the slash HE would be the European model. Uh, this has the weirdest name. DR, you would think it's digital. HT, you'd think it's a handheld, but it's not. Uh, this transmits at a high of 85 watts and a low of 5 watts. And I can't see that there's a mid-level setting on this radio. Runs about $156. And probably the microphone has the most controls on it of any of the radios. So what did I choose and why? I chose the Yezu FTM-3100R. Uh, 
I like having a high watt, a mid power, and a low power. Uh, five watts is good if you're just talking to HTs near your vehicle. I mainly chose it for the controls that are on the uh, panel with the one button push. It's just the way I like to operate. So these controls are what I look for. Other people can look for different things. It has a one button press for the changing the squelch. I live in an area where there's a lot of RF interference, a lot from those lighted signs that's in front of businesses and schools. Uh, I also like the reverse function for repeaters. You press that and you will hear the input channel. So you can tell if other stations getting in the repeater are close by or not. The other button is the transmit power. Uh, I like being able to switch power quickly without having to go into a menu system. These are very handy and inexpensive radios. So if you think you might want one, go ahead and do some research. Find out which one is best for you.